Hello everybody. Now uh, I'll try to discuss the basics of the fluid flow, remaining part of this thing. So we, we can start it with the motion of the fluid. Um, here you can see that acceleration of the fluid can be expressed like that. Acceleration equal to we know the a x y z t uh, as a function of the space as well as the time. So here the del v by del t dt by dt. Really del v by del x with respect to x dx by dt. Del v by del y del y by del t del v by del z and del z by del t. So therefore dz by dt. Now here you see that this represents the uh, the v the similar way we can say dv by tt the velocity with respect to time changing but here dv by dx we have given but dx by dt represent the velocity u similarly dy by dt velocity v and dz by dt velocity w so this is the acceleration uh, acceleration but in vector form this acceleration can be written like that del v by del t and v dot products gradient and the this velocity vector. So therefore, the first term represents the local acceleration, and second term represents the convective acceleration. So that is the total acceleration is the local acceleration as well as the convective acceleration, and uh, combining these two. Where del is the this particular symbol is the del operator, which is defined by the vector form, the del by del x, del by del y, del by del z and this is i, o, j and k vector, unit vector along x, y and z direction. So, correspond to that. This is the del operator. So, if we do further in terms of the, the you can from the vector form to we try to see the components uh, of the acceleration we can explore in the three dimensional case. Then the acceleration component in the x component is that du by dt, u del u by del x, v del u by del y w del u by del z. You can see here is the u are there, but here u v w are there. Similarly, a y or v component are there, but u v w. So, similar way a z can be there. So, we can see that it is a local acceleration component is there as well as the convective acceleration both are there in these cases. Now, local ac acceleration with respect to time basically unsteady flow, it represents the unsteady flow and a convective acceleration, acceleration with respect to the uh, position. So, we two parts are there. So, acceleration with reference to the time, another case is the acceleration with respect to the position. These two components we have included uh, here and here you can take an example also. For example, is the nozzle, the velocity at point 1 and 2 does not change with time. So, when it is not changing with respect to time, then it means that flow is the steady state flow. But however, velocity is changing with position. Here you can see the velocity is changing with position and this is due to the convective acceleration. This is due to the this part, the this, this convective acceleration component. Uh, because of that, velocity is changing uh, with the changing of the position. But if velocity at particular point changes with respect to time, then local acceleration will should have been come into the picture. So therefore, here you can see that when you consider the steady state flow, then definitely uh, the flow is all the flow is steady state, but velocity might be changing uh, with respect to the uh, position only in these cases, and that is the that is because of the effect of the convective acceleration term. But if uh, it's unsteady, then definitely the local acceleration term will be uh, there, and this is I think all this analysis based on the. A Lagrangian approach here. Now, visualization of the flow field, what we can represent the flow field and we can understand the flow field. So, fluid flow visualization basically understand the complex pattern of the fluid and here I can, I can the different uh, uh, terminology or analysis we involve to understand or to visualize the flow field. For example, in case of the turbulence, vorticity, flow separation or all the fluid flow phenomena associated with the analysis. Now, once we visualize or understand the flow field and from there we can explain the, the what can be the pattern of the flow field in case of the turbulence, what can be the pattern of the vorticity is there represent but so visualization should be very clear such that we can distinguish the turbulent vorticity and the 
whether there is any flow separation occurs or not. So, all this phenomena should be represented in terms of the velocity field so that we can easily distinguish this particular phenomena. So, now flow visualization why you go for try to understand the flow visualization because some phenomena need to understand here. First is the flow pattern should understand. Second, uh, we are understanding we should go for the design optimization of the engineering devices. It means that if the flow analysis represents the turbulence or is there, vorticity is there, we can following this phenomena we can represent, so we can optimize for the de engineering devices such that we can avoid flow separation turbulence or sometimes there is a need to do flow separation also. Similarly, rectification of the flow related issues also that is why it is important to understand the visualization of the flow field. Then enhancing safety and reliability of the devices where we are using this particular analysis and of course, sometimes we can utilize the validation of the computational model. So, these are the typical features which is need to understand the flow visualization to explain all kind of the phenomena. Now, flow visualization techniques one we represents in terms of the streamlines. So, that is you understand the, uh, in the fluid mechanics course also. So, here streamlines represent the curve that is tangent to the instantaneous local velocity. So, curve the tangent to the instantaneous local velocity that line represents the, the streamline. If you see this arrow represents the velocity vector. So, different discrete arrow represents the velocity vector, but when you try to make the streamline by considering consisting of all these velocity vectors. So, it represents the instantaneous tangent with respect to the velocity vector and that line represents the streamline. So, streamline shows the instantaneous direction of the uh, uh, fluid flow. So, one represents the any this is the streamline. So, at any point this is the flow direction represent that any instantaneous value of the direction represents the flow field associated with the streamline. So, mathematically equation streamline it should be dx by u, dy by v, dz by w. So, where u, v and w is the velocity components along x, y and z direction. Similarly, we can sometimes represent the streak lines also. Streak lines the locus of the fluid particles that have passed sequentially through a prescribed point. So, particular point the locus of the fluid particles and within the flow. So, here you can see the flow pattern observed by introducing the sometimes we to the tracer fluid. So, for example, the smoke in the air flow. So, we can we can represent the smoke of the air flow. I can see that how this particle of the smoke is following particular sequentially path. So, that path is represented in terms of the, the streak lines. So, into the st stream of the uh, the flowing fluid which is represent the uh, streak line. Here you can see this is the flow field and with the fluid particle we can introduce the fluid particle within the flow field and you can see the flow field is basically uh, the passed sequentially one particular uh, path. So, that path will be joined. So, that path is represent the streak line and that is having over an object. Similarly, path line also there. So, if the path travel by an individual fluid particle over a period of the time within the flow. So, that path is represented in terms of the path line. For example, fluid particle at the very beginning, fluid particle at the some intermediate time. So, this is the at the beginning then some time it become the point this the fluid particle here, here is the fluid particle. So, like that this path completely path if we define uh, by uh, tracking in the uh, position of the fluid particle then it represents the path line. So, fluid particle at the beginning of the uh, sorry uh, the fluid in this way we can represent the path line associated with the individual fluid particle. So, for in general you can say that for steady state streamline, streak lines and path lines is basically same in case of the uh, steady state situation. Now, we try to look into the conservation of the mass system because we need the uh, we try to under the fluid dynamics we need to know conservation of mass movement of an energy. This is most widely used uh, uh, the, we use the basic equations uh, basic principle we utilize to any kind of the um, manufacturing process. So, that is why we need to understand the uh, different uh, this conservation of mass and momentum and energy associated with the uh, flow. So, conservation of the mass, the mass conservation of the control volume during an expression we can see that the, this is the this we define dotted line that is the control volume approach and so mass is entering to the control volume. So, I can see it is the rate basically. Um, total mass entering the control volume over a particular t time period delta t 
and here the total mass out of the system control volume uh, that is the during the time delta t and that should be equal to the net change in the mass within the control volume. So, change in the mass within the control volume over a period of the time delta t. So, that represents the over a fixed time delta t that is why we represent the rate. Basically, you can say m dot in it is a rate, m dot out it is a rate and then that should be equal to the rate of mass change within the control volume. So, there but if you in the steady state situation therefore, rate of the mass change with the control volume that should be 0 in case of the steady state situation. So, here steady state possible total mass content in the control volume does not change with respect to time. So, that is why mass in and mass out that should be equal but for a single stream flow in this case m dot 1 equal to m dot 2. So, here mass flow rate we can calculate that rho 1 uh, a 1 cross section area for example, this is the pipe here. So, here cross section area A and uh, the density of the fluid uh, at this point equal to rho 1 and velocity equal to v 1. So, similarly the out here density rho 2 cross section for example, A 2 and velocity v 2. So, therefore, mass flow rate should be the same at steady state situation. So, therefore, rho 1 A 1 v 1 that indicates the mass flow rate and rho 2 A 2 v 2. So, this way you can utilize uh, this uh, understanding of the conservation of the mass in a uh, fluid system. Then continuity equation for the mass conservation equation we can see in the three dimensional case continuity equation what we can the simple way we try to understand that continuity equation how it forms. So, for example, we take an element consider the small control volume element having the length del x del y and del z for example. Now, the corresponding inflow and outflow on particular direction it represents like that. This is the inflow. So, rho cross section area dx dz in this case uh, suppose this is the direction x. So, uh, sorry this is the direction um, y. So, therefore, that is why we consider the dx and dz equal to represent the a area. So, I say the dA. So, rho into dA into velocity for example that represents the total uh, rate of the mass inside uh, enter the inside the control volume and outside this plus because this is a changing if the del this is the mass is changing with respect to y. So, that is why uh, this is the uh, exit part we represent the uh, elemental that what is the uh, this is entering and what uh, it is changing what entering plus changing this is the total mass which is come out out of this direction. So, this with respect to y it is changing. Similarly, y uh, other direction this is the area velocity and this is the this part which is total and here is the the what is the change part within this to travel over the distance delta z. Now, overall we can see the similar way along the other direction we can we can calculate the similar way. Now, from the mass conservation principle we can say that what is the input out rate that should be the, the rate of change of the mass inside the control volume. So, once we do that follow the mass conservation principle I can calculate the putting the values of the all inflow and outflow we can say like that that inflow and outflow. So, total inflow is this one all this direction x, y and z direction we can see sum it and outflow will be like that. This is the one x, x or y direction it is another direction and this is the other direction. So, here total outflow from the control volume. Now, the change of uh, within the control volume change of mass within this control volume with respect to x equal to this one d of the area uh, dv by dt rho dv by dt a derivative of that that indicates the total rate of change of the mass uh, within the control volume, but that is only the x component in this case. So, inflow minus outflow see the inflow minus outflow this represents this is the component in x y and three different components and other uh, in this case rate of the change of the mass within the system is this one. One is the with respect to the uh, time component this one and uh, I think there might be another uh, dx dy dz and ok. So, this is equation. So, this is rate of change of a component and now this 
and then it should be the next term equal to this one we can further manipulate this one equal to 0 and this we represents this the del rho by del t time component x y and z component and rho, uh, rho u by delta x rho v by delta y rho w by delta z so this e that equal to 0 so this depends on the continuity equation for the compressible and incompressible flow and depends on the what we can take care of the the density term in this case so here uh, from here we can see from here we reach this continuity equation so this is the well known continuity equation we can see the it's a basically the uh, mass conservation equation from the mass conservation within the control volume from there we can reach the uh, continuity equation in case of the fluid mechanics an uh, analysis. Now, you know there is another equation that is Bernoulli's equation which is really very useful uh, in, in specifically in case of the analysis for the casting process. So, Bernoulli's equation is the approximate relation between the pressure velocity and the flow term the uh, and the pressure velocity flow and the elevation that means at the, the elevation that means at what I um, the height of the liquid uh, there is a change of the height of the liquid then in that cases the we generally approximately use a relation exists between all these three velocity flow and the pressure that can be represented in terms of Bernoulli's equation. So, here this equation is applied between the two points say of the steady and steady two points of the steady and incompressible fluid flow that means incompressible fluid flow means that during the flow there is a no change in the density term so that that uh, that is called the in, incompressible fluid flow so here that bernoulli's equation applicable between the two points is like that for example total L length is the ds and here the pressure p and the area delta a and the here the pressure p plus delta p is change of the pressure for example area delta a and the weight of the liquid is the uh, w and making the angle theta this one. So, uh, such that uh, x y Cartesian coordinate system represent theta that this represent the uh, this is the elemental layer ds. So, this should be the dx and this will be the dz such that ds should be uh, square root of dx square plus dz square for example like that is the relation. Now, Bernoulli's equation uh, in this case the frictional forces are assumed the, the negligible while deriving this particular equation that is the main that is why we say the approximate relation because we are neglecting the frictional force here uh, in, in Bernoulli's equation. So, here we see that release the transforms of the energy from between the two points of the fluid that what we represent this graph uh, suppose this is the uh, one element of the liquid. Now, we, here we apply the Newton's second law. So, basically Newton's second law we can say that uh, force equal to mass into acceleration that is the representation of the Newton's second law. So, here force the force means it is acting the force this side as well as the this side that is the force is representing pressure into cross sectional area. So, P d a minus P plus d p change of the pressure for example, at this particular point and over the elemental area d a and the weight of the liquid w is the cos theta and this is the w sin theta. So, w sin theta minus w sin theta equal to this is the total force acting on this particular element, element fluid element and that should be the mass into acceleration. So, here mass into acceleration can be represented the m is the mass acceleration represents v into dv by uh, ds uh, in this case. The V dv by ds, we know uh, this um, acceleration uh, of the fluid particle and the Lagrangian approach here and it is a one dimensional case this V into dv by ds that we have already seen here. So, here we, we usually use any any this kind of the form where the we say the convective acceleration is there here, but there is a because we are neglecting the it is a steady state there is no uh, there is steady state situation. So, convective acceleration will be there. So, that is why we represent the convective acceleration here V into dV by dS. So, mass into that from here we calculate minus dP dA this uh, we can think and sin theta we represent the sin theta in terms of the uh, dZ and dS. So, dS sin theta dZ and sin theta is basically dZ by dS. So, dZ dS we can balance. So, in terms of the x, y, z and here also dS and dS will be uh, balancing here and we can uh, further 
uh, okay from here we can reach here uh, minus dp rho g dz equal to rho v dv we re reach this expression and from here we reach this particular expression and this is Euler equation actually because the uh, and from there if we do the integration above we can get the Bernoulli equation p by rho gz v square by 2 that remains the uh, constant. So, here you see it is this equation and Bernoulli's equation, but this is the very specific case in the sense there is a steady state and we are considering there is no frictional loss. Then only we can reach this particular equation and that equation can be represent the conservation of the energy in the point of view. But this conservation of the energy we are following the we are reaching this expression from the neutral second law, but by neglecting the frictional losses. And here we see the P by rho Bernoulli's equation v square by 2 this is a different head also we see that uh, kinetic energy we can say the velocity head of the fluid system then flow energy the pressure head this is the pressure head this is the velocity head we can say and potential uh, head associated with the uh, fluid system. So, that remains constant and of course we see this is very valid along the streamline this equation is valid here. For here for example, in this case is the sum of kinetic potential and the flow energy. So, I this think the, this equal potential energy, kinetic energy, flow energy that becomes remains constant for the steady state flow along a streamline. So, here this is the interpretation of this thing, the kinetic potential flow energy remains constant uh, of a steady state flow and but not only steady state flow, it is along the streamline also. So, that means if we apply the Bernoulli's equation between point 1 and 2. Uh, in the steady streamline flow here you can see at point 1 we represent the pressure head velocity head potential head and press uh, the point 2 pressure head velocity head and potential head that should be equal so energy conservation is there in this case now some application of the Bernoulli's equation uh, in materials processing we can see in case of the die casting also uh, under the high pressure in the mold cavity so to obtain the velocity field to understand this thing and the pressure field also in the mole cavity we can apply the Bernoulli's equation to relate uh, between this on the pressure and velocity term here. Then extrusion process also to get the specific shape the metal is forced through, the, through a die in case of the extrusion process the metal is forced through a die. So here Bernoulli's equation can be applied between the, the two different points and to estimate the pressure drop between these two and the flow field also flow rate also along the extrusion path that can also be applicable in, in extrusion process this bundle equation is also applicable and sometimes it can be applicable in case of the spray coating also. Here the flow velocity and the pressure drop calculation is required in the case of the spray coating and to maintain the uniform coating also. So, such that minimization of the over spray. So, therefore, this can calculation can also be performed by using the Bernoulli's equation. So, this we will see on the particular problem or we will apply this equation when we try to look into all this kind of the manufacturing process. Now, I come to this point the basics of the fluid flow this is the Navier-Stokes equation. We know this Navier-Stokes equation usually utilize uh, for the momentum conservation during the fluid flow, but we try to look into only the different terminology associated with this Navier-Stokes equation. So, it is a basically partial differential equation and that actually represents the motion of the describe the motion of the fluid considering the influence of the flow velocity, pressure, density and viscosity all term, terminology we can utilize uh, uh, there. The Navier-Stokes equation is basically derived from the Newton second law of motion and applicable to the fluid motion and here combining with the continuity equation and momentum equation in case of the compressible flow. So, sometimes with the conservation of the uh, continuity equation and the uh, this momentum equation we use it to solve the any kind of the problem. So, here Navier-Stokes equation balance the change of the mean momentum of the fluid element and mean body forces applied on it. So, that is because we use here the Newton's second law of motion. So, that is why change in the momentum should be balanced by the main body forces applied on it. Based on that we reach the mathematically this expression of the um, Navier-Stokes equation. So, rho del u by del t you see this is represent the local acceleration this is the represent the rho u into this gradient the dot product uh, u dot this gradient velocity u and then in this case right hand side it represents the 
the main body forces. So, there are different types of the body forces uh, corresponds to the pressure, corresponds to the viscous forces and then external forces, gravitational forces are included here. All this right hand side represent the all the different kind of the fo uh, forces. So, this first is the this local axis and convective axis comes based on that rate of change of the mean momentum of the fluid element. So, rate of change of the mean momentum of the fluid element which is represented that should be equal to the total mean body forces. This is the basics of the Navier-Stokes equation and it is a wide applications. I think you know this there is a wide application of the Navier-Stokes equation for the different kind of the uh, flow related uh, problem. Now, here you see the application of Navier-Stokes equation in the material processing. We see the in welding process because if welding process if we try to understand the uh, material flow in a fusion welding process behavior then we definitely we need to solve the Navier-Stokes equation to get the velocity field. Even casting process also flow of the liquid metal from the uh, mold cavity to ensure the proper filling and that in this cases to analyze the velocity field also and that helps to understand whether is there any defect is there or not uh, because of the entrapment or lack of velocity in this particular position. Even for the additive manufacturing we can apply this is the study of the uh, here also molten pool is there to, to analyze the velocity of the molten pool and it dynamics also by solving the this Navier-Stokes equation. So, here in this case the dynamics of the molten pool is also necessary to understand that the extent of the fluid flow and the shape of the molten droplet. Even for the processing of the polymer also in this case we sometimes we analyze the flow of the uh, polymer uh, such that improper filling of the uh, uh, mold or is there any formation of the defect because of the lack of the flow of the high viscous fluid, high viscous flow. So, basically that is why the here we can find out the application of the fluid flow even for forging and the rolling process in this case forging of the rolling process how the deformed material flow uh, through the die. So, for this analysis we need uh, this uh, in the forging and rolling process because forging and rolling process we consider the it is the material deformation we can consider the high viscous uh, material flow in this case. So, in terms of the high viscous material flow we can analyze the solving the Navier-Stokes equation to understand the velocity field. Even for the continuous casting process in this case the controlling the inflow and outflow of the liquid metal is also required and of course, in this case we need to understand whether it is laminar flow or turbulent flow. So, based on that we can do the analysis of the uh, analysis based on the Navier-Stokes following the Navier-Stokes equation. So, apart from this thing we the it is also necessary to that is the not only solving the momentum equation we will be getting only the velocity field uh, conservation of mass and momentum. But if you understand the temperature distribution also then energy transfer is also required in the fluid flow also. Uh, because uh, if you see the in the, uh, the heat conduction problem only we can solve the temperature distribution, but we do not consider here transport of the energy due to the motion of the fluid uh, in case of the conduction analysis. So, when you try to understand the convective heat transfer due to the metal flow definitely we need to consider the energy conservation equation. So, heat content within the domain with respect to time t and heat transfer due to the metal flow. So, here we need to consider the flow field. So, we need the information of the flow field to basically transport the energy within the system because of the motion of the fluid. And remaining part is the is the basically conductive heat transfer. This is the transient term. This is the Q equal to in terms of the flux k dt and I right hand side is the, the volumetric heat flux different way you can represent the heat flux and viscous uh, heat dissipation and various heat sources or heat sunk can be incorporated can be included in this particular uh, this term uh, the this uh, uh, volumetric heat source term here right hand side. So, different way you can incorporate the volumetric depending upon the problem. So, here if you look into the heat conduction problem also. So, heat conduction problem this term we basically neglect in case of the heat conduction problem. The remaining parts are there in the heat conduction problem. So, here also energy conservation is there, but in this case we say specifically for the energy conservation is maintained if we consider the transport of the heat due to the motion of the fluid. So, uh, that part is incorporated here in the energy conservation by, by including this particular term.
uh, here we see certain applications also that conservation equation mass movement energy and material processing technique try to link where we can apply and what we can apply the uh, this conservation equation for example in case of the continuous casting process so is the the inlet liquid metal is there and this is the outlet outlet in the form of the solidified component and from the side wall there is a uh, heat loss is there such that heat extract is there such the solidification should occur we can our solidification can be controlled so here you see the mass conservation momentum conservation energy can both are used so mass conservation ensure the mass flow rate incoming and outgoing uh, metal is there and the proper mold filling is there for that we need to maintain the mass conservation helps in controlling the cutting speed to achieve the uniform thickness because it is moving on particular the velocity so that's why in controlling the cutting speed is also necessary to achieve the uniform thickness so here we can find out the application then momentum conservation crucial for the understanding various forces what are the different forces and the flow pattern to understand the in the flow field because within the liquid metal the flow field is also important so here we need to look into the momentum conservation equation and energy conservation equation is also required we need to different heat transfer phenomena solidification what is the temperature distribution of the oil pool and what is the temperature distribution of the heat affected and all comes under the the energy following the energy conservation of course heat distribution in the heat affected zone that only need to solve the conserve, uh, heat conduction equation but within the liquid metal molten pool we need to solve the heat conservation equation including term of the the energy transport due to the fluid motion so here this energy means to the different understanding the different cooling rate or how the from based on the cooling rate what are the which part is cooling rate is mass that can be linked with the microstructure also or we can see whether is the need any kind of the secondary cooling system is required or not to modify the solid uh, solidification process so all kind of the decision making things can be possible by analyzing the uh, conservation and mass momentum application in case of the continuous casting process similarly we can see even welding process also so welding <coughs> process we follow the uh, mass added uh, to the welding system for example in this particular welding system is there so liquid metal is here the liquid uh, arc is created and liquid metal is uh, basically consumable arc and that metal is transport to the system and it creates the molten pool also and there might must be having some kind of the heat loss from the uh, to the surrounding so here for mass conservation to account the mass added to the system maintain and ensure the continuous flow of the liquid metal within the, the oil cavity also so so that has to be look into by solving the mass conservation equation then momentum conservation equation describe the velocity field within the molten pool in that helps to uh, apply the moment of conservation to get the velocity field and along with the different driving forces applied forces to the system similarly energy conservation is also applicable overall to understand the what is the account accounts the what is the total heat input to the system and what are the heat distribution occurs and how, how it influence the solidification behavior and what is the loss of the heat from the surroundings and all this analysis is required and and here the from the energy conservation equation we can repair we can get it and we can get the output in the terms of the temperature field and that temperature field helps to find out the estimate the cooling rate and that cooling rate is finally linked with the amount of the residual stress and the microstructure formation in case of the welding process similarly polymer extrusion process also we can apply the mass conservation momentum conservation and energy conservation equation so here you see the the ex polymer extrusion process means this is the uh, this metal this is the control volume a ram is applied force is applied so here the the this uh, liquid the uh, as per the die shape and the this uh, uh, extruded polymer come out uh, from this through this die and that is die means it's basically designed the the as per the requirement of the product now here mass conservation ensures the continuous input and output to the system and helps to design the uniform distribution of the material within this uh, control volume or within the system then movement of conservation helps to predict the flow pattern uh, material flow pattern what is the pressure distribution here so this pressure distribution flow pattern actually helps to design the die and shape of the die uh, for example if there is no flow of the material inside the particular position so therefore we cannot keep the die is very corner we can make the geometric change of the die to such that there is a proper flow of the material or polymer is inside the die is possible 
Similarly, energy conservation to account the cooling rate, temperature distribution to account the cooling rate from the temperature distribution and the heat is required and such that we can get the quality of the uh, product and uh, because non-uniform distribution of the temperature might be distort uh, the temperature product. So, therefore, this helps to whether the temperature distribution helps to whether there is any uniform distribution or non-distribution temperature is there in the extruded product or not. That kind of the information we will be getting by from the by solving here the conservation by understanding the conservation of the mass momentum and energy equation in case of the polymer extrusion process. So, I think in this uh, uh, particular module I have tried to explain the basics of the fluid uh, mechanics and then the application of the conservation of the mass movement of and energy equation of the different manufacturing process. So, actually the thrust of this uh, particular topic is more important that what way we can utilize the uh, conservation of the mass movement and energy equation in any kind of the manufacturing process. We will further explore all this application of the conservation equation when you try to look into the actual topic in the subsequent modules. So, for the time being, thank you very much for your kind attention.